Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Chef Check. Um, so lately we've been solving a lot of different types of equations, right? And we just recently started taking um, phrases and translating those into equations. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper and take word problems and write equations from those. All the equations we work with today are going to be in the same form. If you look up here, you'll see we have this form called AX plus B equals C. So they're all going to involve some multiplication and some addition uh, within our equation. So stay tuned. we got some good stuff coming up. So by the end of the video, you'll be able to take a word problem and write and solve an equation in the form AX plus B equals C. And you'll know that any equation that's written in that form can be solved in two major steps. It's important to note that equations that are written in the form AX plus B are called linear equations, and you'll use these a lot, a lot, a lot in math going forward. Um, and something here to pay attention to is that when we have A, B, and C, those are our known numbers, and then X is going to remain our variable or our unknown. That'll be something that changes, and that makes a lot more sense as we go through some examples. Our first example tells us that Estelle spent $37.50 at the Brown County Fair. It cost her $6 to get in and $4.50 per ride. And we're being asked to write and solve an equation to determine how many rides she went on. As I read this, I was thinking to myself, what is my unknown? What is the piece that I don't know here? And we're trying to figure out how many rides she went on. That's going to be my X, right? That's the variable. Um, the thing that I know is that she paid $4.50 per ride. So if she went on one ride, it would be $4.50 times one. If she went on two rides, it would be $4.50 times two. If she went on... I don't know, seven rides, it'd be $4.50 times seven. If she went on X rides, it would be $4.50 times X. So that um, is going to be our AX in our equation. That's the variable part, right? And then the other part is it cost her $6 just to get in. So I'm going to add that six on. She only pays that one time. She does not have to pay that over and over like she would the rides. And then all of that's equal to what she spent, which was $37.50. So here's the first part of this problem. We wrote our equation uh, to represent the situation. Now we need to solve it using inverse operations. So I see that I am going to first need to subtract six off of both sides. And what that leaves me with here is $4.50 times x equal to $31.50. And if I think of this in terms of the actual problem, what that means is, okay, so she had $37.50, and then after she paid the $6 to get in, she had $31.50 left to go on those rides. So to figure out how many rides she was able to go on, we'd have to do the inverse of multiplying it by 450, which means we're gonna divide it by 450. And again, I'm showing my work on both sides of my equation. And I'm going to find out that she was able to go on seven rides. So um, here is my equation. Here is my solution. I'm going to go ahead and put a label on that as well. We're looking for both parts of that for a complete answer. All right, now it's Victoria's turn. It tells us that Victoria sold candles at the Bayport Craft Show. She made a profit of $250. She made $7 for each candle that she sold, and her total expenses were $37. We're being asked to write and solve an equation to determine how many candles she sold, and we're being told to use C for the number of candles. So I'm just going to go ahead there and define my variable. Okay, um, when I'm looking at this, I see that it says she made $7 for each candle. Those words there, that for each, um, is a hint that that's going to be the multiplication piece of my equation, right? Um, so $7 for each candle. If she had sold two candles, it would be 7 times 2. If she sold 
30 candles, it would be seven times 30. But we don't actually know how many candles she sold, so we leave that as our variable. That's our C, okay? And then it says that she had to um, pay her expenses, right? She had some expenses that were $37. So what that means is that after she sold her candles, um, she had to deduct that $37 that it cost her to kind of get things ready, right? That's how much it cost her to be in that craft fair. And after all that, what she had left was her profit. And so that was the $250 that she had remaining. So our equation is 7 times C minus 37 equals 250. And this is the um, $7 per candle. And this 37 that's being taken off, those are her expenses. That's what comes off of what she makes. And then this is her profit. So let's solve this equation to see how many candles Victoria sold. So I'm going to go ahead and add the $37 back on to both sides. And I will now have 7 times C equals $287. That's what she would have made if she didn't have any expenses to pay for this. Okay. Um, and then the last thing we need to do there is divide by the cost um, per candle, which was $7 each to figure out how many candles she sold. So 287 divided by seven is 41. So she sold 41 candles at the craft show. Our third example tells us that Brady bought some rolls of film for his camera. He spent a total of $52 after a discount of $8 off his total purchase. Each roll of film cost $7.50. We're being asked to write and solve an equation to determine how many rolls of film Brady bought. And we're gonna say that R is our rolls. That'll be easy to remember. All right, so well, we know that he um, paid $7.50 per roll of film, right? That that um, each roll tells us we're gonna be multiplying there, okay? Um, and when he did that, um, that would have been how much he normally would have spent, right? But then he got this discount of $8 off. So whatever that total was, we would take $8 off. I could do minus eight or I could do plus negative eight, they'd both be fine. Um, and then once he did that, once that discount was taken off, that total was $52. So here's my equation to represent this problem in the form ax plus b equals c. And I do feel like it's a quick, I need to point out quickly, the variables aren't always, this isn't always going to be an x here. It just means that this is an unknown or a variable, something that changes. So don't be alarmed if you notice this isn't an x. We're still talking about some unknown. In this case, it's the rolls of film. So now to go ahead and solve this equation to see how many Brady bought, I have to add 8 to both sides of this equation. And I'm going to find out that $7.50 times R equals 60. So what that means is before that discount, it would have cost him $60. But that was, you know, before his discount. Then we divide by the cost per roll to figure out that each roll, or R, cost him or uh, that he had eight rolls of film. I'm sorry, we know the cost. This is how many rolls of film he had. So here's our equation. And then our answer is um, Brady bought eight rolls of film for $52. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to your turn. Uh, you didn't think I'd let you finish without trying one on your own yet, did you? All right, this problem says Trenton is saving money to buy a bike. He has $57 and is going to save an additional $12 each week. The bike costs $189. Write and solve an equation to determine how many weeks it will take him to have enough money to buy the bike. So pause the video, write an equation, and then solve it, and then push play to see how you did. 
All right, there's the equation that I wrote. I have 12 times W plus 57 equals $189. It's $12 each week plus the $57 he already has until he gets to this total of what he needs. So now let's solve this equation. So what we're gonna do is we are going to subtract 57 from both sides of our equation. And what that's gonna tell us, you guys, is that, hold on, let me do the math first, <laughs> is that if we take off this $57 that he already has, we take that out of the equation here, then that means he still needs to save 132 more dollars to buy the bike, and he's making $12 each week. So if we then go ahead and divide by 12, the amount he makes each week, we'll be able to figure out how many weeks it takes him to save up to buy that bike. And 132 divided by 12 is 11. So we've got our equation here, and we know now it will take um, Trenton 11 weeks to have enough money to buy that bike. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. And as always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, send me an email. I'd be happy to go through this with you. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.